All right, folks, welcome to Dallas. Uh, tough night last night for the Raptors in Memphis as they lose it. Uh, they're third in a row. This road trip doesn't get any easier. you got Dallas tonight. You go into Houston on, uh, you know, for New Year's Eve, a team that is one game now below 500. And the thing that we keep talking about on the broadcast, and it's, uh, you know, I guess like never planning for an injury, this team has never had issues with turnovers, Eric. We've talked about it over the last five, six seasons, even when they were, you know, a 33, a 27 win team in the Sam Mitchell era before the team was transformed, they were always near the top in protecting the ball. And that is killing them right now, the fact that they're turning the ball over. You mentioned it on the broadcast yesterday, leading to easy buckets, yeah. high percentage from the other team in terms of field goal percentage, because you can't stop a three on one or a two-on-one, or a four-on-two with any kind of regularity. See, and that, that, that to me ultimately is what, what undid them not only last night, yes. but that game against the Pistons. You looked at last night, Raptors with a 12-point lead early on, in spite of being undermanned and, and, and you know, let's just say the talent level, even with a, a, a Grizzlies team versus the Raptors, especially with Bargnani out, Memphis is a better team. Yes. But Toronto came out and did exactly what they had to do. High energy, jumped on the team early, got out to a first-quarter lead, but then turnovers, turnovers, unforced turnovers, and the free throw line. To me, that's where the game was lost. Yes, yeah. It wasn't lost because they didn't have Andrea Bargnani, or it wasn't lost because they don't have an O.J. Mayo or a Rudy Gay. It was lost because they were sloppy with the ball, and they could not take advantage of their opportunities at the free throw line. You have 25 turnovers, almost 30 points off turnovers, and you shoot 5 of 14 at the free throw line. You're done. Yeah. Period. A season high in turnovers of 25. Following the 24 season high. Yeah, back-to-back -back games now with season high 49 turnovers. 49 in two games. And, and you know, you, you, you can hang in, and you can see the confidence in their faces after the first quarter that, hey, maybe we can steal this one. Yeah. But once you start to turn it over, and then, folks, uh, you know, the injuries. Uh, Bargnani, again, as we said, not expected to join the team on the trip. Jose Calderon was limping pretty badly in that fourth quarter. So, you know, his status, uh, there was no practice today. No shoot around on the back to back. We'll see what his status is. See, and interesting enough, there were some rumblings. I don't know how much they're fact or fiction, but there were some rumblings that his ankle is still bad enough that there was some question as to whether or not he would even play last night. Yeah, now, we were at shoot around. He took part in shoot around. There wasn't any word that he was a game time decision. It was fully expected that he would go, but there were some rumblings that they were at least keeping an eye on it, yeah. wondering, okay, when the game time rolls around, will he be able to go? He did. He logged, what, 35 plus minutes? Yeah. And as you say, limping around in the fourth. You know, we're <coughs> sort of speculating here. I would say game time decision for him as well, just yeah. based on you know how things have gone the last couple of weeks for Jose, and then based on what he did last night and how he looked in that fourth quarter. Yeah. And Amir Johnson's definitely got to be game time. I mean, if he was game time last night, plays 30 minutes uh, in the game, ends up playing. I can't imagine that he's feeling great today. So he's probably going to have to give his back a little test as well to see if he's good to go. Wouldn't surprise me to not see Jose play. But on the bright side, though, uh, you look at the play of Joey Dorsey. Yeah. Uh, did a terrific job. Again, tied another, tied his career high with 13 rebounds. And they're going to need that tonight. I mean, Dallas is a banged-up team, too. I mean, <laughs> their coaches had knee surgery. Uh, Rick Carlisle, uh, Dirk Nowitzki got hurt last night in Oklahoma City, and they just carried on without him. They're a talented team, um, you know, second best in the NBA right now. And with the veterans and the way they're bringing things together and Tyson Chandler anchoring their defense in the middle, Eric, this Ooh. could Tyson Ooh. Chandler, oh. yeah, yeah, former was it Raptor for a few hours, supposedly, uh, maybe a, a day or two. Um, it, look, this team could be one that uh, knocks on the door come June. So um, it'll be interesting to see what Toronto is able to pull out tonight. They've lost ten games in a row yeah. in Dallas, and two of the most improbable ones that we saw in 06 or no 04 and 05 yeah. with twenty four point leads. And had them frittered away. I got nothing to say to that. You're right. It's it's, it's such as the the life of the Raptors yes. for the last X number of years. It's been going like that. But uh, hopefully there's there's some minor miracle tonight because I'll tell you what. You and I were talking about on the bus last night. I don't know if other folks have realized. I was just sort of sitting there kicking back on the bus. It was about one o'clock in the morning. I got the earbuds in, listening to some music. I'm like, hold on a second. Raptors started the season two and nine. Yeah. They've got two and nine over their last eleven right now. So they basically bookended six and two in the middle with two and nine on the ends. Ouch. Now the problem is, does this mean that if we're following the pattern, the trend, there's a six and two coming with Dallas, Houston, Boston, Chicago, Cleveland, Boston? 
I don't know if I'm getting a six and two and then Sacramento. Sacramento. That might be. <laughs> yeah. That's seven games right there. Man, oh man. Yeah. This is going to be a tough stretch coming up, and I certainly don't know if we're going to see a six and two pattern following this latest two and nine. But they've got to find a way to get themselves out of the funk at this point because now ten games below five hundred. Yeah, and if you slip man, further, oh yeah, you slip further down there. I mean, you could be looking at the season right here. Let's be optimistic though, and hopefully they get some healthy bodies back and and get this thing hopefully back get on some track. Food. And let's get some lunch. Hot belly. Uh, not pre- not my gut. That's where we eat. That pregame show on the fan uh, and uh, broadcast tonight starting at what time are we? Eight on? o'clock. Eight o'clock Eastern.